part of having church now. That's what we're going to do. We're gathering here to have church. Worship the Lord. That's not a bit strange to all of you folks to go to Jesus Christ and your Savior. The Bible tells us that we're to worship Him more as we see the day approaching. Anybody here this morning see the great day of the Lord approaching? Yes, sir. It's approaching for you upon us. But uh, we want to thank everybody. I'm telling you, I've never seen so many people <laughs> running around here last night honor Brother Larry, and that's what we want to do. We want to honor him. He loved to have church. He loved to be in church. He loved to sing and worship God. I don't know of anything else that we should be doing. But uh, I'm sure folks can find other things, but uh, we want you to just uh, ask the Lord right now as we open with prayer this morning. Ask the Lord to help you to worship God. The enemy, he comes in and he tries to hinder us in our minds. But we're not worshiping God in our mind, we're worshiping in the spirit. Amen. Amen. They that worship me must worship me in spirit and in truth. Amen. Praise the Lord. As I said, we're going to start to, just like we do church, so I want everybody to stand to your feet. And... Uh, for the family, Sister uh, Bessie, Russell, Angie, as well as all others, we love you this morning. God loves you more than anybody here. Amen. And he's been your strength, I know, over the last few years. And he'll continually be your strength. In our weakness, he makes us strong. Yes. Amen. Let's bow our heads together. Heavenly Father, we thank you so very much this morning. For our brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. We thank you for all of Brother Larry's family. Friends, God, neighbors. Lord, that have come and, and not only come to worship you, but come to pay their respects. Show their love for, for Brother Larry. And God, I, I thank you this morning that we have the privilege to speak to this. I so great a people today. We ask your anointing be upon the lips of each and every one that's here today as they worship God. We need you, Lord. And you said that you would never leave us, never forsake us, that you would be with us always, even unto the end of the world. And God, we pray today that your presence would be as real as it's ever been in any worship service that we've ever been in. God, the presence of the Lord makes the difference. We ask your blessings today in Jesus' wonderful and lovely, lovely name. Amen and amen. Turn around, shake hands with somebody and say, hey, I come to worship the Lord and we pay honor to Brother Larry. We're going to have uh, Brother Clyde and Sister Barbara come at this time. They're going to sing a song for us, and we want you to rejoice with them. Oh. 
Bible tells us that the joy of the Lord is their strength. It's amazing. Uh, one of the greatest families that I know that I've met in church, and that's not leaving nobody out of this. <laughs> when you get all the pettits and all the swaggers and, <laughs> and all the other folks together that I don't know yet, uh, there's more to come is what I'm told. But I want to take a minute to just ask everybody to keep uh, Brother Junior and Sister Rose in prayer. Uh, we all know that they will be here, that there are situations there, and I apologize for my brother Jim. Uh, but uh, prayer works. Amen. One of the best things that I can tell anybody that's here this morning, the devil is having a rampage with your family and mine. Yes, sir. You can get mad at me and you can say, hey, this is not the time or the place, but this is the very place. Amen. Yes, sir. This is the best place. You're not going to defeat the uh, enemy of your soul by running with the world. That's right. Amen. Amen. I found that out a long time ago. I'm only 79 years old. I don't know a whole lot, but what I do know, I've learned in the church. That's right. Amen. But I thank God for the privilege of knowing Brother Junior. I got Junior on my mind now. I told you these these uh, this family will work on you. <laughs> Brother Larry, is, he's been such a faithful friend. That, and uh, as soon as Sister Rose called me and told me that he had went on home, the first word in the scripture that came into my mind was Micah 6 and 8. Walking humbly, that's what the Lord requires of every one of us. Amen. To walk humbly. Before. Brother Larry was a humble man. Psalms verse number one said, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. The world's been deceived today by that one thing there. We're not walking in the ways of God. The United States of America, as well as the rest of the nations of the world, they're not walking in the ways of God. I believe Brother Larry, he loved the Lord and he was walking in the ways of the Lord Jesus Christ. He was a good man, precious man. And I'll tell you, Sister Bessie, she just keeps on reaping the blessings. She was blessed with a good man, wasn't you, see? Now, I, one thing I can't figure out, I was looking at those pictures back there and I said, now I don't know where they should have put all those on there, huh? I mean, you, all you seen coming across that screen was love, kindness, fruit of the Spirit. And then two kids come along. I don't know how long it was after those kids come along, but I know some Brother Larry's missing a couple of teeth. <laughs> <laughs> That's the kind of man we know, right? We love Brother Larry, his family. And they come all the way from Louisiana to tell uh, uh, how that uh, Brother Larry talked to uh, his niece how to count. Now, I'm not going to teach you tonight because I think most of y'all are enough. <laughs> but those things are important to us. They're memories that we'll never forget. Amen. Families should be close. Yes, and the devil, like I said, is trying to rip you apart. His job is to create havoc hatred, bitterness, strife, envy, jealousy, and you, the list goes on. But the Bible tells me that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They told me to take all the time I wanted. Told me not to worry about it. But said, we're, we're going to give you 30 minutes to get out and sing. <laughs> I've never been told that before. But uh, I told Sister Louise this morning, I said, everybody needs somebody to be the boss, right? <laughs> so if they tell you, you gotta, you got to get in line. I want you, well, uh, usually people don't carry their Bible to, to a funeral service. But like I said, the, you know, just if you see one laying over in your seat, just reach over and pick it up. 
Job chapter 19, the book of Job. So many scriptures run through my heart, my mind, as I thought about Brother Larry. I don't have no doubt whatsoever that Brother Larry is in a good place this morning. Amen. He's home. Yes, sir. He's home, and we have a lot of scriptures that we could go to, but Job chapter number 19 and verse number 25. Job says, For I know that my Redeemer liveth. I'm looking over a congregation today and everybody don't know that they have a Redeemer that's alive today. He's our kinsman Redeemer. Yes, sir. Yes. Messiah. Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. We need to know him. Brother Larry knew that he had a Redeemer. For I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God, whom I shall see for myself, and not another. I don't have to worry about somebody else coming and telling me that they've seen Jesus. I want to see him for myself. The Bible, this book that I hold in my hand, it's called the Bible. You spell it B-I-B-L-E. For an educated country that we live in, the people don't know the word of God. Come on, bro. They lampoon and laugh and mock. And the things of the world causes you to do that. The devil causes you to do that. But we can't blame everything on the devil. Because we have a whole lot to do with what we choose in this life. Come on. God told you and me the same thing. He said, choose you this day who you will serve. He will not make you. There ain't no pastor that I know will try to make you. But blessed is the man that preaches and teaches the word of God. Come on. This is God's love letter to every one of us. Yes, sir. And he does not love one over another. Come on. But he does require of us to live a righteous life, to be a faithful people, to be a loving people. And if you know any of the family, you know that that is an operation in their homes. I'm not saying that they dot every eye and cross every two. Hey, Russell passed by. He got here a couple weeks ago and didn't even say, Hey, Brother Justin, how you doing? <laughs> I mean, sometimes you're going to run into some situations like that. <laughs> he loves us. He cares for us. But in thinking about, already got me looking at my watch. <clears throat> in knowing that our Redeemer lives, in knowing that he's going to stand upon it. One, one of the things that I was thinking about, all the trials that Job went through, all the suffering, all the pain, all the sickness, that he still had a testimony. He said, I know that my Redeemer lives. That's right. Amen. Can you imagine a man that's sitting and, and scraping the dead skin off of his body? And he goes on and says, Yet I know That's right. that I shall see him. And I shall see him for myself. That's right. You don't have to take the word of people of this world. There's too many deceivers in the world. That's right. Yes, sir. They'll deceive you. The enemy of your soul, as I said, will deceive you. We've got a very, very precious opportunity today. You ever heard that say, an opportunity knocks but once? Well, you've got an opportunity today to hear the word of God and hear it from a man that will tell you the truth. Come on. I'm not preaching about preachers. I just want to tell you about the righteous preachers. Come on, brother. Righteous. Righteousness exalts a nation. Sin is a reproach to any people. 
Brother Larry didn't want me to come in here this morning and spend the whole whole 30 minutes talking about what a great man he was. We could spend hours talking about that. Come on. Come on. He loved to laugh. He loved to talk. He loved to. Uh, and my goodness, I told Sister Ruth uh, before she ever talked to Sister Bessie, I said, I know we got to have a big dinner because me and Brother Larry loves him. <laughs> says, I know that he'll stand at the latter day upon the earth. He said, in my flesh, I shall see him. Thank you, Lord. You talk about faith. Yes, sir. A dying man scraping the scraping the, the skin right off of his body that never one time denied God. That's good, brother. I shall see him for myself. Larry had the faith just like Abraham had the faith. There's something that keeps us driving. Now, certainly Jesus Christ uh, uh, is the one that we're to have faith in because he told us to have faith in God. Simple. It's like in the beginning. In the beginning, God. That's right. right. The old time preacher, he said, anybody that can get through those first few words in Genesis 1 and 1 shouldn't have any problem with the rest of the Bible. Come on, brother. In the beginning, God. Yes, Go up your hand and say, thank God he's the creator of the world. And he's the savior of mankind's soul. And he's the creator of the sin that he built for you and I. And Abraham was a man of faith and looked for that city. He said, a city that has foundation, whose builder and maker is God. Amen. Larry had that kind of faith. Amen. That he was going home one day. Abraham, amen, he went to that city. Larry is in that blessed city. And in John chapter 14, we, we share that with people all the time. It ought to make you come out of your seat. It ought to make you throw up both hands. Amen. And, and clap them for the glory of God. It ought to make you stomp your feet and rejoice. Because the joy of the Lord. Amen. God placed joy in your heart. And, and the enemy tries to take that joy away. Where is all the joy in America today? Come on. Faith. Faith. Abraham. God called him out of Ur, the land of the Chaldees. Yes, sir. A heathenistic, occult worshiping nation. Yes, sir. Abraham was, he wanted a family. He wanted to, he wanted to be blessed of God. I don't care what situation anybody's in in this world that we live in today. If you want out of the sin pot that you're in today, you need to cry out to God. And when you hear the voice of the Lord, you need to stand to your feet, to, amen, and obey God. The Bible said that, that when Abraham heard that voice, he obeyed God, and he went out into a country, uh, amen, that God gave him for a possession. He That's became right. after. That's right. We need God, church. We need God. People say, oh, I want, I want to go to heaven. Oh, I know I'm going to see Brother Larry one day. Can I just tell you in love and kind words? The ungodly will never enter into the city of God. Amen. That's right. Glory to God himself spoke to this world and he said, You must be born again. Amen. Come on. Not of water, not of, of flesh. Not of the will of man, but of God. Yes, born of God. Yes, sir. Scripture, John chapter uh, uh, 11. Or John chapter 1. I'm already wanting to get up to chapter 11. I'll have to hurry because my 30 minutes is just about gone. Brother Larry had that kind of faith that he believed God. He believed God was preparing a city. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. Amen. He said, if it was not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you that where I am, where Jesus is, where Brother Larry is, where all the saints, uh, amen, that we've been here and gathered together, uh, amen, that's been our brothers and sisters in Christ, uh, they're there. Come on. We'll take Brother Larry's body out to the cemetery. 
my friend, that, that's not the Brother Larry that we know. Brother Larry is in heaven. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Our spirit leaves this old body and goes directly to be with God. Amen. Let not your heart be troubled. People are troubled every day. We spend more money on dope than any people in the world, probably. We spend it because we got it to spend. Come on, bro. I'm not telling you to spend your money on it. I'm just telling you to quit dope. Come on. Come on. I told myself that the other day, and I quit taking prescription drugs. <laughs> it's killing me. Doctors say, hey, this is what you need. They don't know what you need. Well, I better get off of that. I'm not telling you to go to the doctor. I'm not telling you nothing. Dr. Jesus, the Bible refers to him as the great physician. Amen. And he's the one that answers prayer. Yes, sir. Amen. He answers prayer. Yes. Brother Larry was a man of love. Amen. Jesus Christ taught him his, his word. Yes, sir. And he would continually ask people that he came in contact with. What is the great commandment? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, and all your soul. And your neighbor as yourself. But he told him, he said, another commandment I give to you, a greater commandment, that you love one another even as I have loved you. That's putting a big responsibility on every one of us because it's easy to hate My wife, she worked hard the other day and she was gritting her teeth in her sleep. I said, I wonder who she's mad at. <laughs> Keeping me awake like that. Hey, you've heard the saying, don't get bitter, get better. Hit the altar and put forth a prayer of repentance. God forgive me. Hardest words to say. Please forgive me. Hardest words to say. I love you. Come on. It don't come overnight. You have to work on it a little bit. Anybody hear that? Yes, sir. Amen, sir. That's a commandment from heaven. That's not a commandment from the pulpit. Come on, bro. That's a commandment from God Almighty. First Corinthians 13, so I've shared with you Hebrews 11, uh, the faith of Abraham. Brother Larry had faith. Uh, he was a blessed man. He was a prosperous man. God blessed him with a great wife and a great family. Uh, amen. Children uh, and grandchildren. Uh, I'll tell you, Timmy, uh, it, he's, a, he's a grandson, buddy, that sticks right with grandma and grandpa. Amen. And that's the way it should be. Families should pray together and stay together. Because if we you know, I, sometimes I wonder how we ever want a war anywhere in the world. If we're having war in our families and we can't pray for one another, come on. Yeah. We're of all men most miserable. Yes, sir. Yeah, come on. There'll be no victory. Yeah. But the Bible tells us, and the Apostle Paul speaking to us, uh, he said, uh, we are more than conquerors. I shared with him Wednesday night that word conquer is to it means to have a decisive victory. Folks can't even decide whether they ask Jesus to forgive them or their sin or not. Decisive victory is to be like Job and say, I know that my Redeemer lives and I know he watches over me. Yes. I know he watches over me, keeps me. 1 Corinthians 13, the love chapter of the Word of God. Hebrews 11 was the faith chapter of the Word of God. We'll be sharing with you chapter 15 at the cemetery, the resurrection chapter Amen. of the Word of God. Though I speak with tongues of men and angels, there's a lot of rattling going on in the world today, church. Come on, but the Bible says, though I speak those very enticing words with men's wisdom, 
Though I speak with tongues of men and angels and have not love, charity is what the scripture says, but that means love. Yes, and have not love, I am become a sounding brass or a tingling cymbal. I just go around jingle leaning all the time. Saber rattling is what the world calls it. They want to get another nation all rattled up. Let me, let, let me go on and hurry up here. Though I have the gift of prophecy and understanding all mysteries, and though I have all faith so that I can remove mountains and have not love. That's right, brother. It don't make no difference how great I speak. It don't make no difference uh, what I prophesy. It does not make any difference uh, about my knowledge. Uh, amen. Uh, what makes a difference is do you love your neighbor as yourself? Amen. Do you love God? Yes, sir. Brother Greg Ball down in Florida, you know, he, he gets a team out there every day. They, he said that they send about six teams out every day to clean up those folks' house. Six, seven men on, on a team. Sometimes you got to put some legs on those prayers. That's right. Show people that you love them. Though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, though I give my body to be burned and have not love, profiteth me nothing. Go ahead and stack your money up. Go ahead and do whatever you want to with it. Sure, you know, you work for it. But God does it to you. And God requires of you and I to be good stewards of what he blessed us with and what he gave us. It doesn't help. Verse number four, it says that love suffereth long and is kind. Yeah. I never heard Brother Larry raise his voice not one time. But I said, sure he had to because his kids, they're too, they're too, uh, they're too orderly. <laughs> Either that or they're scared to death. <laughs> Love suffereth long and is kind. Love envieth not, not puffed up. Come on. Don't rejoice in iniquity, but rejoice in the truth. Yeah. It's a whole lot easier to love one another than it is to spend all the money and, and try to accumulate everything that you can that will destroy your soul. Yes, sir. And we know it, but we can't help it. So I'll tell you what I tell the church. I'm watching and I'm praying for the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm looking. Yes, sir. I'm watching and praying. And that means that I'm watching for his return, but I'm praying for you. Come on, brother. The pastors that I know, they pray every day for their congregation. People say, oh, preacher, don't that upset you? Jesus said, you ain't got time to get upset. I sent you to preach the gospel. Preacher's supposed to be worried about everything coming and going. No, the preacher's supposed to be preaching the gospel. Come on, brother. We've got so far away from the gospel that we think it's a, it's a Hollywood showcase anymore. Oh, that's the truth. You're right. that's the we truth. need God. We need to be filled with His Spirit. We need to be filled with His love. We need to be. We need to have the fruit of the Spirit working in our lives as Christians. People say, "I want to be like Jesus." Humble yourself, just like Brother Larry did. The psalmist said that he would not refuse a humble and a contrite spirit. He'll receive you into himself. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come unto the Father except by me. Amen. Yes, sir. Jesus is the way. I wouldn't give you. <laughs> I'd give all I had to have Brother Larry back, and I'm sure that his family will be. I know Sister Bessie will. I'd laugh Brother Larry because he'd tell me, he'd say, hey, I, I need Sister Bessie. This is why that, uh, 
that uh, all of her family rises up and calls her a blessing. You remember that little lady in the book of Proverbs? Yes, sir. Sister Bessie took care of Brother Larry. Yes, sir, she did. Amen. Amen. Just like the Bible says. Brother Larry said, Bess! <laughs> Didn't hear nothing from Bess. You get a little out of Bessie, where you at? That got Sister Bessie's attention. We thank you for taking such good care of Don't we? Yes, Jesus. we do. Yes, All we the do. family, certainly. Yes. Just like the song that Brother Clyde and his wife sang. I want your family to be together in heaven. That's I want right. my family to be together in heaven. But there's one family, and it's the family of God, and we'll all be there. Yes, sir. But there's, there's things that we got to do to make sure. I know that I, I talk about taking advantage of the opportunity and only knocks once. So as we bow our heads here this morning, I'm not going to ask anybody to make open confession unless you want to. I made open confession. With the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made into salvation. Salvation is still the best way to go. Salvation is still the best route. So while we pray this morning, I want you to choose this day. This is your day of opportunity. We don't have to be ashamed because God's already told us. He just laid the law down. If you're ashamed of me in this sinful and adulterous generation, I'll be ashamed of you. Let's bow our heads together this morning. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the family this morning. We thank you, God, for your care for Brother Larry while he was here. But God, we know that he's rejoicing in heaven today. God, I pray that you would stir the hearts of our loved ones. God, that they would make the choice, that they would make the decision. There's nobody done them wrong but the devil. You're the one that did us right. You laid down your life willingly. Nobody made you. You chose to die for the sins of the world. I'm so thankful this morning, God, that we have a re redeemer. I thank you that we have hope and we're looking for him. I'm looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, this morning. We're praying even so, come quickly. God, would we want our people to be ready. I pray, Lord, that they would ask right now for forgiveness of sin. I ask right now, Lord, that they would ask you to come into their heart. We give you praise and we give you honor and glory this morning. We pray this prayer in the wonderful and lovely, lovely name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior today. Amen.
not alone, that they're loved, that you're willing to stop your day and come alongside and walk with them. So please know how important your time is today, that you've chosen to do that. And because that is the case, the family and the church body here have made arrangements following the services at the cemetery to have all of you gathered back here with the family for a luncheon. In just a moment, after our service is concluded here, we will be continuing on our way to Rest Haven Cemetery for committal service and then returning. We're probably going to be about an hour and 15 minutes round trip. And uh, But when the family comes back, if you're not coming with us to the cemetery, they would like to have all of you gather and get back here with them back in the gymnasium. And if you could walk with them the remainder of this day with your time and just let them know that you're willing to do that, that would mean a great deal. It's really not about the luncheon. This is an opportunity to minister to them one more time. So just kind of look at your watches as you leave here and give the family some time to do their route or circle. But they'd like to invite all of you here for that luncheon. If you would do that, please. As we conclude, we're going to dismiss everyone in a row at a time. You'll be allowed to come forward, take a moment here at the casket to say farewell. You're welcome to greet the family. They'll just have you slip out through the back of the church. And I know you'll want to fellowship further, but we'll have you do that outside the sanctuary. We'd like to keep this room quiet for the family. They're going to say their own goodbyes. It's difficult, so just be sensitive to that. And then when they're ready, they will come and join you, and we'll prepare for our uh, committal service. If you're in line uh, in the procession for the motorcade to Rest Haven, as you go to your vehicles, please turn on your bright headlights and your hazard flashers, and uh, we'll be under escort as we travel there. So remain seated, and we will come to you.